Welcome to ECE 345 Lab. This first lab we're going to take a look at an oscilloscope, a function generator, and a digital multimeter. Oscilloscope, or just scope for short, is an instrument which can display voltage versus time. The scope we have in lab is also called a two-channel digital storage scope. And what that means is that the two channels can display two different voltages at the same time. Digital storage means that a voltage is converted to a series of binary numbers, and this is stored in memory, and then converted for a monitor to display. Suppose that we set the function generator to a 6 volt, 1 kilohertz sine wave. What's shown here is a capturing of the oscilloscope screen. First thing to notice here is this little ground symbol. What this means is that this is the zero volt reference line. So above it, we're positive, and below it, we're negative. There's also a y-axis scale and an x-axis scale. These refer to the large major divisions. So here we have 1, 2, 3 times 2 gives us 6 volts peak for this sine wave, and likewise a minus 6 volts. You can count 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 divisions again, but now it's 200 microseconds per division, so that's going to give us 1,000 microseconds, or 1 millisecond, and that would be the period of a sine wave whose frequency is 1,000 hertz. So we indeed get the value of the sine wave that we had set. All of this is in words below here. We're going to be looking at some basic circuit elements uh, in the course and some integrated circuits. We're going to start with resistors. That resistors actually come in different sizes and shapes, but many resistors are coded with four colored bands. Each color has a meaning, and each location of the band has a meaning. So if you have a color black, it's a value of zero, brown one, red two, orange three, yellow four, green five, blue six, violet seven gray 8, and white 9. There's also colors of gold and silver, and actually the absence of color, and those refer to tolerances. Let me explain that maybe through an example. The first band, and this is really the band to the farthest to the left, um, if you orient the resistor to kind of look like the picture that's over here, that first band is a placeholder, second band is a placeholder, and the third band is the power of 10. And then the fourth band is the tolerance. Just as an example, suppose that we had a resistor. Okay, if you look above here, red is 2, violet is 7, yellow is 4, and gold is 5%. So what that means is that this 270,000 ohm resistor is really between two possible ranges of values. 5% above and 5% below that value. So somewhere between 256.5K and 283.5K is the actual value of that resistor. We're going to use an instrument to measure our resistors and see, well, within, again, some range of values as to what its true value is. To do that, we're going to use an instrument called a digital multimeter. And it's just that it does many different things, one of which is to measure resistance. The first technique we're going to use is called a two-wire resistance measurement. What the meter is doing is creating a current and passing it through the sample and then measuring the voltage at the terminals of the instrument. Let's kind of show it in a picture below here. I like to use um, red wires for the positive and black for the negative. You're building some pretty complicated circuits and using colors can help us find wiring mistakes and also let others uh, be able to, to come in and add or take away parts from our circuit or do interconnects. Suppose we had an unknown resistor here and we took a cable and we connected up, we're looking at a grabber cable in a little bit, to each ends of this resistor. The current would then flow through here and back through here. The voltmeter is a very high resistance element, so very little current goes into it. We could model this as an equivalent circuit where we've got a current source. And then we've got the wire to the unknown resistor, and then a wire coming back. That wire has some resistance. Now the meter is monitoring the voltage back at the face of the meter. So we could do Kirchhoff's laws here, the voltage law, to 
take a rise in voltage, which would be V, and then you'd have a drop of the current, I, that's flowing in this loop, which is our current source, times the resistance of the red wire, and then also times the unknown resistance, and then times the resistance of the black wire. So we've got three voltages added up as drops, equaling this rise in voltage. So we can pull out a common I, and so the ratio of the voltage across the current source to the current would then be the value of these three resistances. Now, for measuring a sample where we have a pretty large value for this, these are typically in the 50 milliohms to maybe as high as half an ohm range. And so if this is large enough, we could pretty much ignore those two wires and the resistance that they contribute to the overall resistance. And this is true for almost all the things we're going to do in lab this semester. But suppose you wanted to measure something that was maybe 1 ohm to maybe 10 ohms then these values would become significant in terms of a, an accuracy of our reading. Our meter has another feature called a four-wire resistance measurement, and it's really bringing out another pair of wires and connecting that across the sample. Because the drops across the resistance of the wires, we could eliminate if we could bring out another pair here to measure across the sample. You could show this in the equivalent circuit. It's just measuring this voltage. So now the current that's flowing in here is the same as the current in the sample, but then we're measuring the voltage across the sample. So we're actually getting a, a true value of R sub unknown here in this case. Now the resistor has a tolerance, but actually so does the instrument. And every time you measure something, you slightly change it. Hopefully you don't change it by too much. The meter that we have is called a five and a half digit multimeter. And what that means is five of the digits can go from zero to nine. There's a full range of all values, but one digit can only go, in this case, either zero or one. And the half referring really to a binary uh, sense of having um, only one place and two values. The meter has a, an accuracy, like a resistor has a tolerance, and let's take a look at maybe measuring a resistor on a particular range. We'll see that the meter will auto range and try to put the display with the least number of leading zeros. And I want to show you why that would be important. On the 20k ohm range, what this means is it can measure something up to 20,000 ohms, and it'll change scales as the value of the resistors that we're measuring go up or go down. But the accuracy on this scale is actually 0.0028% of whatever you're reading, plus a digitizing error, in this case, two digits. Now, what does all that mean? Suppose that we measured the following right here on our multimeter as 13.3413 k ohms. In terms of the accuracy of that, if we take the reading and multiply it by 0.0028%, now that's putting two more zeros in here, and we're also looking at k ohms here. If you multiply those two to get this result, carry it out to as many places as my calculator had. Now, there's also what's called a count error. This is because of the digitizing inside the meter. It's saying that we should add two digits. So whatever scale you were on, in this case k ohms, all of these digits are zero except the last one, and it's going to be a two. If it was seven digits, there would be a seven here. If it was ten digits, we'd have a, a one zero here. So that's how a digital multimeter expresses its accuracy. A percentage of the reading, which generally is the bulk of the error, as you can see from this summation here, but that digits can also contribute quite a bit too. In this case, maybe about half of the overall error. The more zeros you have here in front of the actual first number, the smaller this will be, but then that two digits will still always be there. So it's kind of a minimum error that you're going to have. Now, if you add those two up, you get this number here. And if you add and subtract that from the reading, you wind up getting a range which this meter is reading that value. In other words, your resistor falls anywhere between these two numbers. What that's really saying is if you look at it, the first four digits are the same on both sides of this equation. So we really have quite a bit of resolution in terms of measuring this resistor compared to the tolerance of the resistor itself. This actually is very good. I know you haven't seen instruments yet, but 
many years ago, the accuracies were really only uh, 1% and sometimes half a percent, but, but this is really uh, quite uh, remarkable in terms of being able to resolve a value of a resistance. Maybe try, try an example on your own. Suppose that I had this reading on the Fluke multimeter. Could you show that the values that you actually possibly do have are falling between these two limits? You don't have to turn that in, but just give you a chance to play with another example. In this lab and labs are follows, we're going to be wiring things up. We talked about putting wires onto the resistor. We're going to use a couple of different types of wires. One's called a BNC cable or a BNC connector also. What that is, is a plastic jacket surrounding a wire that itself is surrounded by some highly resistive material, sometimes Teflon or just polyethylene, and then a braided metal shield around it. It's really forming just that, a shield, from letting extraneous signals get coupled into this center wire. And then we use connectors that basically preserve the shield. You interconnect and then twist. This type of a connector can go very high in frequency, up into the gigahertz range. Now in this course, you're going to look primarily at audio frequencies, which would be about up to 20 kilohertz. But since our instruments are used for many laboratories, and we do look at a range of frequencies, our oscilloscope and multimeter and the wires we're going to use that can go for very high frequency measurements. But basically what you've got is an inner wire and then a ground uh, that's connected to the, the system ground, usually the oscilloscope ground, which is a connection back into the wall outlet and a little round pin in the outlet. And we also have some lower frequency measuring wires, and one's called a banana to banana wire. The banana part refers to the fact that this end of it, or this end here too, Looks like a banana that's been peeled and put back together again. These are really meant for, for DC type connections. And we're going to use these for power supplies bringing into our circuitry. And then we're going to measure a resistor. Being able to grab onto something is what a banana to grab a wire can do. So we can just hook this into our meter on one side and then on this side hook up the sample. This too is a low frequency uh, wiring setup. And again, uh, measuring resistance would be something done at DC. You can also kind of make a grabber clip by taking an alligator clip and connecting it up to one end of the banana wire. And we'll do that sometimes if we want a little bigger grabbing onto something. Each lab has a purpose. In this particular case, the purpose of this lab was to introduce you to an oscilloscope, a function generator, and a digital multimeter. Those are basic tools of measurement and testing. And in this lab, we'll get our first time operation of these instruments. With most labs, you'll see that there are concepts covered and techniques covered. In this particular lab, we talked about the resistor color code and the accuracy of components and the digital multimeter. There are also more things in specific parts of the lab. The laboratory techniques that you also experience when you do the lab is voltage, amplitude, and time measurement using an oscilloscope, measuring resistors, and then measuring resistors with a four-wire probe. Next time you come to lab, there'll be a quiz, and this quiz will be covering the lab video that you just listened to, and also the lab that you're about to do. We'd ask you to read this before you come to lab, so that you're familiar with some of the specifics that we're going to be dealing with in the experiment. And this is lab number one.